Um, so, so what I wanted to do was, uh, I just wrote a blog post last weekend, and it, it, I've been thinking about this for a little while, and I, what I wanted to talk about was, was why, why hardware is becoming the new software. And I, I think, for, for those of you old enough in the room to remember what the term rack and stack means, where you had to actually go out and buy servers and stick them in cages and rent a cage, and, and, you know, and that's the way you started your company. You know, if you think back only 10 years, maybe 15 years, that was the only way you could do it, right? So you spent money on servers to, you know, to do a software company, you spent money on, on hosting services, and you, had to build, and you had to raise so much money to do this that you actually had to build a management team because otherwise the investors wouldn't give you money in the first place. So you had this whole sort of investment, sort of use of capital that had nothing to do with the core idea that you were trying to solve. It had everything to do with the fact that you just had to build this whole stack of infrastructure before you could start adding value. You're still, still you know, sticking Linux on the boxes and, and maybe getting Oracle licenses and expensive stuff like that because open source didn't really exist yet. It was just kind of a hobbyist fringe thing. Of course, what happened in the last 10 years what, was that that changed quite radically. Right now, you use a credit card, you stick it on Amazon Web Services, and with hardly any work whatsoever, you have the whole stack set up. And now you can actually, two guys out of college can start a company a software company, and can you know start an Instagram and sell it for, sell it for a billion dollars if they're lucky, right? So you have nine people, twelve people at Instagram selling for a billion dollars, having twenty-seven million users, growing 50, you know very quickly to fifty, and they can do all that with a credit card, and they can all be twenty-three years old because again, you know there was no barriers, no capital barrier to entry, and and for software companies today, very few software companies even get funded if they don't have a working prototype, maybe even users, by the time they come and show you the idea. If somebody came to Martin today and said, I want to pitch you my idea, Martin's first question will be, well, show it to me. Not show me the PowerPoints, show me the code. Or show me the thing up and running. And then maybe he would write a $75,000 or $100,000 check, not you know the million dollars or three millions you used to have to get before, because you needed all these servers and the rack and stack and everything else, right? So my hypothesis is that what has happened to software in the last decade 15 years maybe, is now happening in hardware. And that there's a similar change, and by hardware I mean not just the little sort of physical pieces, not you know chairs and couches, but actual, the whole experience. Obviously hardware has to run software in order to be interesting, for it to be consumer electronics. But the whole hardware stack is going through a really interesting, and the whole hardware ecosystem is going through the same evolution that we saw in software. And I'll get to in a moment what the drivers are, um, and I'll just touch on them real briefly. There's more of this on, on my blog, but the, the interesting thing to me is, you know, some of you might be familiar with Kickstarter and, and, with, um, and with things like Pebble, which was the, the little watch that got funded recently. Now, everybody was up in arms because they raised $10.2 million. That wasn't the interesting part of the story. The interesting part of the story was that they only asked for $250,000, right? They were going to build this watch with a full-on Android operating system, you know, liquid ink or, or you know, daylight readable display, full on Android stack, app, APIs, the whole nine yards. They're going to build it and ship the first one for $250,000. Now, you couldn't do that even two years ago, let alone five years ago. It's impossible. And so you see more and more of these startups now where they're building the whole value stack in hardware. And, you know, what, what are the drivers? You know, so I, I happen to think that one really important driver is is the 3D printing. Because I think to build hardware, you kind of have to touch hardware. So the ability to actually do 3D printing, when we do stuff at Nokia now, and I, I run sort of our internal incubation efforts, and we do a bunch of internal, you know, the, sort of the next thing that's gonna bring Nokia out of the doldrums, hopefully. Um, so we do a lot, of, a lot of really cool next generation hardware, and one of the things, let's do a few things. I can't tell you, <laughs> I'd have to kill you. Um, so uh, what, what's really interesting about what we do is, uh, I have a team I work with in, in Southern California, and I will literally have a phone call conversation with them, and the next day they will have printed objects. They'll have physical objects. We can play with them, we can feel them, we can wear them, we can hang them around our neck, we can put them in our pocket. We can really get a sense of what these things are like, intrinsically. So 3D printing, I think, has really changed the things. And what's happening with 3D printing is you can print out product very soon that almost looks like the finished thing, except it doesn't have electronics inside. So that gets to the electronics, right? So the other thing that's happening now is because of Android, I think that you, know, you can get a full-on operating system, a full-on stack of software up and running on pretty much any chipset. 
let's say you wanted to do the Qualcomm 9680, the Snapdragon chipset, right? You could take that chipset and you could get a, a development board up and running with your specification and configuration with Android running on it in you know, two weeks. You could get it. You, you could get that stuff up and running, maybe even less, at very you know low capital cost. And then you know if you so you, if you figure out you know you can on top of that you can start building your own you know your your own software and, and experience. And then if you, you, you figure out, you've built something cool, you've maybe put Android together with some hardware and you've designed, you've got a CAD model, you've done some 3D printing so you know what it looks like. And then you basically go to Shenzhen, you go to China, and you say, can you build me 100 of these? And it's literally 100. It's not 100,000 like it used to be. You don't have to put a huge amount of capital into it. You can build 100 prototypes. And they will ship you back, and I'm oversimplifying this a little bit for sake of, of, of a more an argument, but, but not much, $250,000, you can basically, you know, maybe they, they've done the, the, prior, the prior ones, the, you know, so they had some experience, the guys that, that did the Pebble. But with a relatively much simpler than it used to be, you can build a piece of hardware, and you can build it a full end-to-end -end operating system on top of this thing and a, an experience. And then you can basically get the prototypes back, and you remember, we're at the beginning of this stage, so we're kind of, my lab startup, we had a bunch of racks and stack servers and then AWS happened and so we started spinning up the instances on, on Amazon very early on. It was still pretty clunky, but we started early on and today you wouldn't consider anything else. Even at Nokia internally now, we're moving to a public cloud infrastructure with AWS. So I think even internally now when we look at our hardware development at a big company like ours, we are starting to increasingly look at ODMs and look at sort of third, you know other developer, you know, and a lot of the layouts we recently heard about was actually, you might have heard about, was was basically layoffs in manufacturing because the whole manufacturing process is changing so fast. And that trickles down, that works into the startup environment as well. So I want to tell you one quick little anecdote and then I'll hand the microphone back to Martin. Um, I had uh, breakfast a few months ago with a guy named Liam Casey. And Liam runs, I, I can't even remember the initials of his company, PCB PCH. or PCH, thank you. Liam's a really interesting guy. He's, uh, he's, a, he's an Irish guy and he, is looking, he, 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 he built, he does about $4 billion in retail value for Apple every year in product. So the retail value is production. So that foldable cover on your iPads, that's Liam. Uh, the Furby, not that that was an Apple product, but that was Liam. So what he does is, he, that, that foldable cover never touches Apple. It, it, when you put an order in, even an Apple store, certainly on the Apple website, it goes straight back to, into his manufacturing process, his back end system. He places the order, he manages the manufacturing process. And what he recently did was, and then he ships you the product, and that gets, you know, so, so the inventory risk for even a big company like Apple is much lower than it used to be. Now what's interesting about this is, um, what he just did was he just bought a couple of guys out of either IDEO or Frog in San Francisco, a couple of designers, because he wants to open a design studio where if you have a good idea for a piece of hardware, you can walk into his designers. He will help you design, he will help you print, he will help you actually push it right back into Shenzhen where he manages the whole value chain of, of, of manufacturing and the whole supply chain, and he will basically help you. you. You know, you need to still develop the software, but on top of Android, of course, in this case, and, and, and you need to have the idea, but he wants to basically start working with startups, not just the big companies. He wants to start working with startups because he sees this happening. So that's, that's my, my, my thought, and if anybody has challenges, and many people do, I've gotten some, some real hate mail around the blog post, but if, if, if anybody has sort of thoughts around this or, or want more information, I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you afterwards. And now I'm gonna be turning into photographer. Thank you. Thank you.